Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Vortex. This was sent to me by Lion Rampant Imports and is designed by Hans Beeftink. Rotate the towers on the dynamic board in order to move your color routes towards their goal. Outsmart your opponents, but beware, every player has a strategy of his own. Vortex. Let me show you how to play. So in Vortex, your goal is to be the first player to move your routers, that's what these little triangle pieces are, uh, from your starting location to your goal area, which is marked by your controller. So these are controllers, the triangles are routers, and these, whoa, are towers. So you choose a color and set up your routers according to the number of players. As you can see, there are different configurations for different numbers of players. And all you really have to do is move your routers. So what you do is you take a tower, be this one, and you move them either one position. You can move them either uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. And that's one move. So I'm gonna go like this. That is called an action and you may only turn a tower if you have or are tied for the majority of routers around it. So let's say I had a router here. I could not lift this one because yellow has the majority. But if I had two routers on here, then I could move that because we are tied for majority. So during the game, you take turns performing actions, but the number of actions you can perform is limited at the beginning of the game. For the first three turns, uh, regardless of the number of players, the number of actions are first player turn, one action, second player turn, two actions, third player turn, three actions, and then after the third player's turn, each player can do four actions until the end of the game. So for a two player game, uh, the first player could do one action, so one of these, one of these turns. The second player could do two actions. Then player uh, one can do three actions. Well, they're only one, two, three, something like that. Uh, and then player two can do four actions. So like one, two, three, four, something like that. And then from that point out, all players perform four actions until the end of the game on their turns. You may divide your actions like I showed uh, between different towers and you must perform at least one action on your turn, but you can pass if you want. So let's say yellow just wants to go one action. They can uh, skip the other actions for their turn. Now there are advanced uh, sort of starting positions you can start with. As you can see, there are different configurations of the routers um, like that. It really depends on, there's a lot of ways you can start the game, uh, but the default is just the two circles or multiple circles with multiple players. The game also offers other variations. There's a cat and mouse variation where one player is a mouse and the uh, other players are cats. And there's also solitary where you just randomly put a bunch of pieces on the board and try to get them into a configuration uh, like one of these two here. Um, there's really not a whole lot much going on besides uh, rotating, rotating these towers and moving these pieces. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how you play. So I wasn't sure what to think of this one at first. Uh, this box is atrociously big and very strangely sized, so it pretty much won't fit on any shelf, which is a little annoying. Uh, but you know what? The actual mechanism of turning the pieces actually works really well. Like, this is the kind of game where half of it almost feels like a toy in the peel, and that's a, that's a good thing for this. Like, because it works so well, like picking out the pieces, twisting them around, that is very satisfying, it spins the pieces effortlessly, it feels good to move the pieces around. And if your game is gonna be based around that as its core mechanic, then the spinning better be good, otherwise the game is gonna suck. The game itself is incredibly simple. I feel like the more players you have, the more chaotic it gets though. It's hard to strategize sometimes because, you know, you do your turn and then as turns go around, pieces just go this way or that way. Uh, the, with a two player game, obviously there's a lot more you can plan around, but when there's more than that, pieces just kind of whirl around here and there. I do like the concept of having the majority in a circle is the only way you can move it. I think that's very clever, but strategy wise, that's kind of the only thing the game has going for it is that sort of idea of moving pieces in the circle to control it. Otherwise, it really is kind of just a bunch of moving around. It's like Chinese checkers, but spinny. But it's simple and it's quick and you can basically start playing it instantly. It is incredibly easy to learn. Put the pieces in and spin them. Move them around. Get them from this circle to the other side. Uh, it seems like kids would like this a lot. Um, I don't consider this like a run out and get it, but it's pretty fun for what it is. It's it's a goofy little spinny game, uh, and the spinning is actually pretty cool. 